Okay, it happens to be Saturday afternoon, May the 17th, 2014. Already. 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 Okay. Memorial Day will be here shortly. Mm -hmm. And all the oceans will open up in New Jersey. With with the rip-off prices and the, with the lifeguards there and the... Uh, and the rip-off cover charge, and the rip-off uh, parking fee, and the and the rip-off uh, fee to uh, change into your bathing suit. Otherwise, you get fined a few hundred dollars by the town, and uh, and and the rip-off prices on food, and, and plus you're not allowed to bring your own food and drink on the beach. It's a complete racket. But then again, it's New Jersey, so well, no, nothing surprises not me. Not only New Jersey, New York is charging. $24 for what? To enter the 911 museum. What? Yeah. Uh Mr. It, Bloomberg uh, defends that. Wait. Well, of course it's a Republican. Hey, Ch uh Chisler's Hall of Shame. I'm glad you brought that up. First inductee is not only uh former uh, former mayor of New York City, Michael uh Bloomberg. The, uh, the little munchkin lot from the lollipop guild but the city of New York shame on you 25 bucks 24. just 24 dollars just to see the Memorial Museum so they are capitalizing on the tragedy of over 300 uh, I'm sorry over 3,000 innocent yeah. people dying they're yep. trying to make money off it yep yep just like I hear, just Chris, like the Republicans are uh, raising money on Benghazi. Yeah. Just like Chris Christie gave gave a souvenir scrap metal to some of his rich friends from 9/11. Uh, I hear. How did he get it? I don't know. Mr. Cuomo give it to him. I have no idea, but from, from what I read in the article, he he did. Well, he, he should did. Have. Well, let me get the formalities over with. Oh, before I get the formalities over over with, it'd be a great idea to tell people who we are <laughs> and what we're doing here. <laughs> oh, gee, everybody knows who we are. Welcome, everyone, to Uncensored, Hard-Hitting Truth. And uh, we are coming to you uh, live and recorded uh, from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in northeastern New Jersey and uh, it is a beautiful uh, Saturday afternoon, spring afternoon. We're supposed to get a high of what, 75 degrees Fahrenheit? I think 74. That's close enough. Close enough. Well, I will now... Where is this damn Wait thing? I will now <laughs> uh, officially pipe aboard uh, my uh, illustrious co-host and mentor and the very uh, founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. <coughs> my authentic bosun's whistle. Or pipe. Or pipe. <coughs> Arr, welcome aboard. Dog, welcome. Dog barking. Now they got the dog barking. Jeez. Welcome aboard our Uncensored, hard-hitting truth, starship, newsletter censored. Traveling at the speed of light. No, maybe warp. Not fast enough. Maybe to... warp seven. Who knows? Warp five. The one and only, the Reverend Doctor William. Warp seven. Would you let me finish the formalities? The... Everybody I know is. This is in... important. Everybody I know is an interrupter. Oh God! Say what you're gonna say. Warp seven was faster than the speed of light. I think warp. Warp one well, was the speed of light. I don't think so. Well, what is mock? Because mock? Voyager never got out of the fourth quadrant or whatever. Well, I'm thinking of mock. Mock. Oh, that's the mock one is the speed of sound. I'm sound, sorry. Yes. The warps. Seven hundred and some. Were speed of light. Yeah. Seven hundred and some miles per hour. Anyway. Anyway. I hours. I introduce you to my co-host, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How, you, how are you feeling this week, sir? Excellent, excellent. See what happens when I pipe aboard my, my co-host. All the all the uh, 
the rude, the kids came back. all the rude entities out there in the world start making unwanted sounds that will un that unfortunately will uh, will be heard on the video. Keep quiet before I punch you out. Okay. Okay, before I I begin with my monologue, <laughs> I want to dedicate this show Ooh. and say hello, gre know. greetings, to my uh, very close good friend from Japan, uh, Miho. Miho. I salute her with my lucky shillelagh. Greetings, uh, Miho, from Osaka, Japan. And, um... And speaking of Japan, um, they found some fish recently off, off the coast of California that had very high uh, radiation levels in it. And it was, very, it was just off the coast of California and scientists feel that it was Fukushima, and, uh, which is probably the best kept secret that the media is, uh, has ever kept hidden is Fukushima poisoning the Pacific Ocean mm -hmm. because the United States media has not said a word about it. What about all the dead fish here in New Jersey that they uncovered? Bunker. Uh, bait fish, yes. Uh -huh. many and you know what they're blaming? Thousands. What? Blooming algae. They always blame it on that. Yeah. Remember the red tide? Yeah. It's pollution. That's what it is. Yeah, due to corporations, of course. Correct. And the Republicans that deregulate them. Yeah. And they're Remember sycophant how people, Democrats. Huh? They're sycophant Democrats. Yeah, the sellout blue dog sycophant Democrats. Yeah. Uh, well, the sycophant is more or less an ass kisser. These are corrupt. They're all corrupt. Sellout Democrats. They're all corrupt. Yeah. They're okay. The corrupt. Whenever you got money involved, corruption is Yeah, right and, and human nature. The Bible tells you that. Thank God there are some people that are strong enough and smart enough to know that um, that's not the way to, to live your life. Yeah, but they can't go up against uh, you know the uh, those in control. Yeah, that's like the, the two the two douchebags of the century, the uh, the Koch brothers. Yeah, the Kokies. The Kokies. Okay, now speaking of sycophants, ah. you know it really sickens me uh, concerning so many liberals out there especially the ultra left they are they are sycophants uh, they they never utter a discouraging word they have no spine no backbone mm -hmm. no willingness to get down and dirty and fight the Republicans uh, and fight them hard because the Republicans they don't play by the rules okay uh, these sycophant liberals are pro censorship naturally because if as soon as you get tough with the, with the right wing, they call you uh, a hater. Oh, that's not the way to do it. You're 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 lowering yourself to their level. Well, hey, guess what? They're winning because you won't fight them on their level. Are you going to negotiate with terrorists? Are you going to negotiate? with hardened criminals? Mm -hmm. Can you rehabilitate a hardened criminal? No. And you no. can't and you can't negotiate with evil. So therefore, they're uh, uh, Barney the dinosaur, I love you, you love me, hippie flower child attitude from the from the sixties won't work. It's not reality. And the reason why I brought this up is because of a a banner concerning that I read concerning the sun tax being terrible from from uh, the organization um, uh, left what was it left power or left uh, yeah I know what you mean 
But, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 left action. Left action. Thank you, sir. Organization called Left Ash Action posted it, and it, it, it was an article concerning uh, the fact that Republicans want to tax solar energy, and they call and they and they they called it. On the bottom, it says uh, taxing the sun is terrible. Oh, terrible! We can't use any stronger words than that against these evil, greedy uh, uh, conservatives that want to tax the sun. Golly gee, gee willikers! Gosh darn it! I mean, it's terrible. That's all they can say. Is taxing the sun is terrible? Well, Mr. Salt, the too diplomatic, yeah, who invented the salt vaccine for polio, right? He said way back when, when they said, "Well, you gotta, you gotta uh, uh, patent your vaccine." He said, "You can't patent the sun." Well. They're trying, they're trying to. to now. Well, didn't they? Mr. Nestle's trying to get the water. Didn't they? Didn't they patent uh, Mother Nature with Monsanto? Monsanto, G yeah. GMOs. Thank Did, you, Mr. Reagan, for allowing these things to occur. My grandfather was completely uh, flabbergasted when sp uh, they were selling spring oh, water. Yeah. Right when spring water came out and cable TV came out. Who me? Pay for water? Are you out of your mind? Who, me? Pay for television to watch TV? You crazy? jeez. Oh, it's free over the air. What else, he says. What else is next? Oh, he did. He must have had the insight in, in, into what else is next. Because he was a big fan of, uh, of mysticism and Edgar Cayce and prophecy and all that. Yeah, and he, and he used to tell me, he's the one that told me that a Democrat will give you a few crumbs, but a Republican will give you absolutely nothing. Well, in the Bible... So he knew about two-party system. In the Bible, uh, Pro Proverbs 11, 24, 25. The liberal is called generous. That's in the Hebrew. Compassion you look too, back right? in the Hebrew. Empathy, compassion. And the word liberal means generous. Well, there's nothing wrong with liberal, but I'm talking about people that... Well, there that is today because they changed it to... But they don't want to be called I'm liberals. They want to be called progressives. Well, what about these people that take it too far? Remember, I hate to bring it up, but remember the Star Trek episode when you had two Kirks? You had 100% positive... Gentle evil Kirk, one and, and the then you had the, 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 the evil side of Kirk, and the both of them needed each other yeah. for balance, balance because, because the, the nice Kirk was so passive that nothing could get done. He was, he, he was inact, there was he inaction. Didn't know what to do. You We're, know, where to turn? <laughs> Which direction should I go in? Indecisive, yeah. Indecisive. There you go. And 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 uh, resulted in uh, in action. Yeah. You know, like exactly. of action. So anyway, you know, you can't be a damn sycophant or or walk on eggshells and worrying about constantly worrying about offending someone because you're always going to f offend someone. You you cannot please everyone. But that occurs because. Both the Republicans and the Democrats serve the same masters, the corporations, and the wealthy. They, that's what they just They just the speak problems. to the media in, in a different way. Yes. Well, they speak in a way to get elected. What is this, this guy in, uh, I forget where the town is or city, he just got elected. For some reason, they got, I think, three commissioners or sheriffs right. in this town or city. And he just got elected as one of them. But he was overheard in a diner criticizing, I'm using the N-word, the nigger in the White House. You know who that is? I don't know. So now they want him to resign. But he won't resign. Well, it's unfortunate, but you know, I, I have to admit, you can't, you can't start applying censorship to certain people and not to other people. Like, censorship is bad. Where does it end, censorship? I mean, uh, 
you know, I hate to say it, but even haters have a right to their opinion. They have a right to their opinion, you know. but they do not have a right to have that opinion get a megaphone. No, because we that, don't got a megaphone. Because then people, people that will re rebut him, rebuttal him, also are entitled to a megaphone. That's correct. So don't, you know. And not only that. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Not only that, a lot of uh, these <clears throat> things that uh, we're calling uh, having a right to say and everything are wrong. They have a right to say, like I, I said last night on Facebook, I explained the situation about the, the young earth theory. They have a right to believe their stupid beliefs. Oh, okay. But I also have a right to correct them. Yeah, we're talking about people that do not really know the Bible. Correct. We'll but they seem that. to get their word out, and yeah. I can't get my word like, out. Like the uh, right-wing evangelical uh, zealots that do not know the Bible at all. And um, they really don't. So... Um, I was, um, I found a very interesting video, a uh, serious video uh, on the effect of social media, like Facebook, uh -huh. the effect it has on people and how people have uh, traded their humanity with technology. You know, like uh, uh, there are people who live these virtual right. lives online with these, uh, with these exaggerated or phony uh, profiles. Uh, uh, making themselves bigger than life or, or, or greater than what they are mm -hmm. and they're, they're hiding their true self and they do nothing but text, 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 text. They're, they're, they're too lazy to pick up a phone and speak to someone. They don't, when they're out in public, they're, their face is in the uh, smartphone texting <laughs> or listening to music. There's no more like one-on-one -on -one communication with a real live human being. There's no eye contact. Interaction. There's no eye contact. Interpersonal interaction. Very interpersonal and um, very uninterpersonal. Yeah, right, exactly. And, and, and it's sad because it's true. Everywhere I go, people are glued to their smartphones and, uh, and nobody really talks to one another anymore. You know, they don't even, people don't even say hi and stop and talk when they're walking their dogs in my neighborhood. Well, they don't even want the answer to how are you? No, no. They don't really want that answer. People do not want to know how you really are. They'll say to you, hey, what's up? What's up, man? Hey, how uh, are you? how's it going? How yeah. are, or, or how are you? Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? But if you stop them and told them how you really are. Hey, I got the time, man. I got to move on. They will look at the time and take off. So, you know, so they don't really want to know. But it's a fascinating video. I, I think I posted it on um, one or two of our uh, Facebook groups. But um, check it out. Um, I'll be sure to uh, put a message under, underneath that lets people know this is the video that I'm talking about. Okay, I saved the best for last, if you want to call it the best. I call it upsetting. Ooh. Fox News, blonde bombshell, Elizabeth Hasselbitch. Hasselbeck. I'm sorry, Hasselbeck. Said. She's on Fox News? She is now. She's on The View, right? No, not. Or was on The View. Was on The View. She got elevated to. Oh. She, she, now she's with people that agree with her. Mr. Ailes must have been watching The View. Now, now she's with people that agree with her. I see. Instead of having uh, Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg yell at her and, and, and bawl her out all the time. Yeah. And well, she was a bitch on The View, though. Uh -huh. she, was a, she, she, had a, she had this arrogant, know-it-all, had-to-win, all-the-time attitude. Conservatives are like that. Yeah, and she tried to shout out. It's their way or the highway. She tried to shout out, drown out, whatever you want to call it, Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg, who are pro progressive liberals. That's now, their method of operation. Right. Now, the statement that Elizabeth Hasselfuck, I'm sorry, Hasselbeck 
made recently on Fox was that she said people on welfare do not deserve to have air conditioning. Why not? Well, what does she deserve to have? You have to understand something. The poor of today... What you call the entitlement. That's bullshit. All of that stuff is bullshit. Yeah. Okay? Just like they social... As Franklin Delano Roosevelt put it, we are all entitled, entitled, yeah. to a certain level of living. Even God says that in the Bible, where Micah 4, verse 4, in the, in the uh, 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 millennium. I call it 4 Micah. Get it? In, four Micah. in the millennium. All people will have their own land and vine and a way to make a living. Especially if it's if it's wine. See? Oh, so wine, yeah. we are entitled right. to a portion of the earth as ours. Even social Everyone. even social security is not an entitlement, it's paid for. Well that's the biggest, you know scam that they the right wing is constantly uh, throwing out there so we what pay for that it's so, an insurance so what a what a petty uh, um, um, what a petty mean-spirited uh, comment well uh, did she so make, petty did she make any comments stingy stingy selfish comments did she, she make any comments about the subsidies and tax breaks, etc., given to Exxon Mobil and word. Halliburton and all the big corporations. Did she make any statement in that area? No, they, they none of them on Fox make any statement then about, they not about, be to. about welfare for the rich, about about tax breaks and subsidies for the for the corporations and the very wealthy. None of them mention that. But every, but but to begrudge uh, a poor person an air conditioner, that's petty, man. Exactly. That's low. It's 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 exactly. Uh, it's it's ingenuous. It's a lie, and it should not be listened to. It's it's an attack. It's a verbal attack, attack on, on the, the poor. poor. And that also comes from the Bible. We know that the rich have a score to yeah. settle with the poor. It's a it's a. But um, the poor have a right, and that's from the Bible. It's a uh, it's like a bully picking on a homeless man. It's, it's like a bully. It's like, no, oh, you can't have nothing. You can't have no. Uh, you can't feed the homeless. We're gonna make it illegal. Oh, you're homeless? That's illegal too. You're a vagrant. We're gonna arrest you. Uh, and and oh, poor. You're poor. You can't have an air conditioner. You gotta you gotta uh, suffer in the summertime. It's like they're constant persecute. They're persecutions. They're persecuting yes, attacks. The poor, constantly, because they want slaves to work in corporations. For bare minimum, for the, maybe just their housing and some bad food, like in the plantations down south. Now, when I make when I make the statement, when I make the statement, the Fox News conservative coven of witches, I I'm starting to believe that that's more accurate than I originally thought with, with well, these blonde bombshells witches. over at Fox. They are witches. I mean, to say that. To, to be that petty, you know, air conditioners have become much lower in price than ever before, like computers. But to say to a person on welfare that they're not entitled to be comfortable in the summer and well, have air conditioning. Let's just, let's just make a little thought experiment here. Supposing you're a poor person and you get a job, you've been looking for a long time, you finally get a job that is in Long Island and you're living in Manhattan. You need a car. It's Long you Island? You grudge that poor person the car to go to work? Now they're going to go to work. Times are different today. The poor person of yesteryear does, did not have the things that we have today. Everything was on Main Street, people. Back, back in the day. Everything was on Main Street. People really did not need a car. Today, poor people need a car. Guess what? Poor, it's not an entitlement. Poor people need a air conditioner, a, a air conditioner because uh, you can pass out and end up in, in, the, in the hospital, in the ER, 
for, during a heat wave, people especially with, people espe with asthma, especially asthmatics, has allergies. The, the elderly, the elderly can get sick, and people, yes, people need a computer, a laptop. That's another thing because today. you can't apply for a job on paper anymore. You cannot call a personnel manager and make an appointment. You have to apply online. Everything is online, online, online. And everything online. is different. Today. It's different. It's, it's, it's a, we're thrusted into a high technology 21st century Right. And what these Republicans are are talking about well, is they're living two centuries ago. They're not yeah, not only yeah. that, but they're a lot of the things they say are just downright stupid. Like like Rush Limbaugh saying uh, something about Hillary Clinton that oh the only the only thing the only thing Hillary Clinton can claim is the fact that she's born a female. But other than that, she she's it's like she's worthless. Like she you know she's 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 nothing she was a senator and she was the secretary of state but this is rush limbaugh i know it's Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> but you know he still has to read the paper i don't know i don't know what what uh inspires him to come out with these words of wisdom i know what it is sponsors He's lost a lot of them, but he still has, but, you know. But there's no, there's never any facts or intellect exactly. coming out of their mouths. They don't want that. I told you how many times. It doesn't matter what comes they're out of their mouth. They're not ashamed of at the idiotic statements that they make. No, they're not, because as far as they are concerned, there are two parties. The Republicans and Democrats. And they will never vote for a Democrat. And they because know. Because a Democrat is a baby killer is a demon and is a secular humanist an atheist whatever because so they will never go there because they believe in their cult and they exactly. believe that a fertilized egg is a human being yes they do when they come well fer yes fertilized and, coming and, together and, and, and when they say stupid things on fox news they probably know that that all the idiots that live in the bible belt states and out west and whatever are going to vote for them Regardless. Regardless of what they say. Yes. Hey, that's, th the, that's the thing. There's going to be a lot of numbskulls and, and, and brain cell um, vacant uh, individuals in Kentucky, I'm sure, that will <laughs> that will vote for Mitch McConnell again. Oh. To, to try to reelect Mitch McConnell. I'm sure they, they are, there will be Kentuckians that will do that. He is one of the tortoises or turtles or whatever that should not be saved. <laughs> you know, you generally turtles and tortoises are very cute animals, but not Mitch McConnell. He's like a demon-possessed tortoise. <laughs> well, you know, in fact, if you're a Bible believer, they are demon-influenced. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Well, this the show I watch, um, The Dead Files, uh, the, the, uh, the medium that can see evil spirits, says that uh, demons have a, the ability to put negative thoughts in your mind correct and to change Satan your broadcast and to change your personality and to make you feel sick and 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 de or depressed or down if you are open to it you have to be open to it correct if you're not strong-willed and, and and a real independent free thinker and you know if, if you're if you're not resistant Resist the devil and he will flee. It was that James said that? Jacob? James. Yeah. Jacob, yeah. But anyway, uh, he will flee from you. So if you're not like that, he, he can influence you one way or another, indirectly, directly. Now, getting back to my final statement on Elizabeth Hasselbeck, uh, anyone, even people with a really good job, anyone can lose their job and then lose their home and end up on welfare. It could happen to anyone. So, for somebody who has a good job and has money to be that arrogant, it, it could even be a welfare caseworker that's a bully. It could happen to them. Did we not have one of those in New Jersey here when the, the homeless person found the 850 bucks? Sure. 
it was recent, uh, not re well, this past year, yeah. uh, locally, a uh, good Samaritan homeless man finds $800, uh, turns it into the police department, the lost and found, and was nice enough to do that. Wait six months. And he waited, and guess what? His welfare caseworker said, you, 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 you have unreported income. I show that you have unreported income of $800, therefore with, we're kicking you off of welfare. You lose all your benefits. You lose everything. So she called, fa fa she called finding $800 and turning it in income. Income. She used it. She was being a bully. She used it as an excuse to kick this man off of his dole. And and that's how they are. They're like, it's it, it, they themselves uh, mistreat, abuse, and degrade poor people collecting social services. There is another attack on the poor by the right. by yeah. government. Uh, so I'm sorry, uh, caseworkers, not social workers. Some caseworkers, but beyond the caseworkers, there is the policies that are set up, and those policies are set up by Republicans and Democrats who theoretically are trying to save the government big bucks you know for welfare and food stamps and stuff and not ExxonMobil etc etc etc. So they will find any pet, pet, nitpicky little excuse to throw you off. Yeah to save pennies where if they looked elsewhere they would save dollars. That's what it's all about. They're worried about the pennies concerning right. the little guy, I mean the, the poor people and the homeless, but they're not looking at the mega dollars that's wasted in military spending and subsidies for the rich, handouts for the rich. Mm -hmm. Mega, mega, mega money. They never look at that. Tax breaks. They never look at that. That's not just tax breaks, tax breaks just, just downright handing over multi-millions or, or billions or even more look at uh, general, dollars look rich. at general motors it just got fined 35 million dollars million i said million with an m million dollars for its uh problems with the ignitions and not uh, telling people and etc cetera, etc cetera. 35 million dollars they make in one day what kind of a punishment is that oh gm is doing that well yeah so it's a little slap on the wrist Ex not even a slap it, on a wrist, it's, it's a slap on your tiny toe. It's like it's like catching a child's hand in a cookie jar and, 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 and maybe smacking his pinky. As punishment. That's the punishment. As punishment. You do not punish the rich with money punishments. Reg unless reg it's huge. Regulate. Otherwise it's not a punishment. You have to regulate them again. It's a cost of doing business. Not a you have to you have to put the uh, the shackles and the chains on the dragon. There you go. You have to regulate them again. Saint George and the dragon. You need to skewer that guy. Yeah, they have to be. Uh, the the demons have to be under control. That the, the demons are the CEOs, in my opinion. But then again, then again, a politician in, in a politician does not have to meet with lobbyists. If he, doesn't, do. if he doesn't want to. Because that's where the money is. Right. Well, right. Jesse Ventura didn't meet with lobbyists because he ran, he campaigned on a low budget. That's right. And he, and he and won. That's where the money is. And that's where, you know, those who need the money, they meet with yeah. the lobbyists. Well, and then the lobbyists make our laws. Not us. The lobbyists. Alec. Alec. All the corporations. So what you're you know, saying, so what you're saying is, very few people in Washington say no to Alec and the lobbyists. We do not have a democracy. We have an oligarch, an oligarchy now, ruled now, by the wealthy and the corporations. Now, is there a difference between the word oligarchy and plutocracy? Uh, if there is, it's a tiny nuance. So they're almost synonymous with almost. each other. Almost. Okay. Almost. Uh, okay, uh, I'm done. But the way corporations have power in our yeah. government, it is fascistic. Bingo. Sounds good to me. Um, 
and uh, you know, uh, like I said before, hello, Miho. Let us now. Hello, Miho. Hey, that, that has a nice ring to it. Hello, Miho. Hello, Miho. Capital M I H O. Miho. Um, let us now sink our teeth into these readings. Do we have enough teeth sinking time on the, the yeah, we will according to the shadow on, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, sundial? Uh, yeah. The shadow on the sundial. When I was watching a science show, uh -huh. I noticed that the narrator mentioned only red, orange, yellow, white, and blue stars. Why no green or violet stars? Green and purple stars do exist. The color of stars depends on their temperatures and they emit radiation throughout the visible spectrum. But when a star emits peak radiation at a wavelength we define as green, it also emits radiation over the rest of the spectrum. Green is in the middle. So, as mixing all colors of light produces white light, a person looking at this star will see white, not green. And when a star emits peak radiation at a violet wavelength, it also emits a lot of blue. As the human eye is more sensitive to blue light than purple, this star will look blue to us. You know, I, um, I've i missed um, the past two weeks of, of uh, Nova. I hey! Have to, I have to go on YouTube and... Check them out. ...and watch them. Now, if I'm not mistaken, after a supernova takes place, the dead star becomes a pulsar, I believe? I believe it becomes a black hole. Black hole. And, uh, if it's still emitting some light, it's a pulsar. Oh, uh, okay. You know, if it's dead, if it's dead, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, gravity becomes extremely uh, high and it becomes a yeah. black hole. Hey, uh, and if you go buy it, baby, you are sir. Tell the captain, avoid that black hole! <laughs> or the Starship Entership, uh, Enterpri Enterprise, Censorship, Censored is dead. Everything will get sucked into the black hole. <laughs> um, well, the, the a quasar is an actual uh, astronomical um, term. A quasar is not like made by Motorola. <laughs> Quasar is still a is still a star that's emitting light. Yeah, it's still uh, still alive, so to speak. Things must be really looking up for President uh, Barack Obama. Well, um, people are happy with Obamacare. The poor are. The stock market is soaring. Is it really? Yeah, sixteen thousand something. Well, he must be putting a little more money back into the uh, little Too guys. much money into Wall Street. Who cares about the goddamn... You know what the uh, stock market was in the 1980s? What? 800. This is benefiting... Oh, I'm sorry, they're going to tell you. No, it doesn't benefit the rich because people on pensions and stuff, they have mutual funds and, and, and stuff like that. So what? The rich are the rich are 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 well taken care of. They're, they're not. The, they should not be the issue. Uh, you were saying something about a tax before uh, on solar energy. Solar energy. Oh, but they won't tax the 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 the, the buying and selling of of stocks on margin. Oh, no, we can't do that. Maybe like a half a percent on each transaction. No, we can't do that. How you know it's it, it amazes me every day 
just how how obsessively ridiculous the sin of greed is with with humans you know it's like uh, and, and to begrudge poor people of anything over a lousy air conditioner mm -hmm. but it's okay for the rich to want to be a billionaire, a trillionaire, a gazillionaire. My money, I made it. I made it all by myself. Yeah, oh, oh I'm, I'm worth two billion. Oh no, it's not good enough. I gotta be worth five billion. Yeah. And, and and then to tell the poor they shouldn't have anything. Exactly. You might as well say they, they want the poor to have nothing. Well, they do. And then die. Then they're desperate and they will take those jobs for nothing. For less than seven twenty-five an hour. Listen, even even fifteen dollars an hour is not equivalent to the high cost of living today, and and to a a a and to, to a corporation that's big, or to a, a multi-millionaire or billionaire, multi-billionaire, fifteen dollars an hour is is like a pimple on a on an mm -hmm. elephant's ass. Mm -hmm. It's nothing, and they cry about ten ten an hour. Well, that's because if they're not paying any taxes, there's no worth to that because in the old days, uh, these things are tax deductible. So if they're paying 70% taxes, then they deduct all these fringe benefits and the cost of wages and etc. And it's worthwhile. But today, they're not paying taxes, so why is it worthwhile? Yeah. So they want to they try to get you to work for them for the least amount of money they have to pay. Well, there's an article uh, coming from Michigan stating that the uh, state of Michigan Republicans want to raise their uh, minimum wage to 1010 to try to spite and and stop the the protesting for for a higher to minimum go higher, wage. Yeah. How is that going to kill the protesting if 1010 an hour is still insufficient? They, 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 well, they they think it that well, you're getting ten ten, man. Hey, okay, we'll stop our we'll stop our attack. Yeah, that's good enough. You're still, they used to do that in the old days with the unions, didn't they? Still behind the eight ball. Oh, the union raises are not much. I remember when I was in the, the unions U went in there and they let's say twice what they end up with. That's get, how it's done. That's how the negotiations get are. like. Uh, you get like a like a like twenty five cents or ten cents raises. You, you, they nickel and dime you with the raises. Yeah. So that you know that kind of um, that kind of a, a contract. From from what I understand, um, every time the contracts were up, the um, the company got its way a little more and a little more and a little more. Yeah, well, that's why the unions go in there would say like twice what they will end up with. Oh, it's That's how it's, it's done. It's kind of like when you're when you're selling something on Craigslist, you always ask for more than much yeah. more because the damn people are going to try to chew you down, yeah. you know, and haggle. They're going to haggle. With I you. want 10 bucks, but I'll accept five. Yeah, same thing with a flea market, you know. Yeah. That's how they work. That's how they work. Will you accept uh, $25? Uh, and then you go, not really. Nah. Uh, what about, uh, well, the pawn shops, too. Same thing. They haggle, right? Yeah. Well, no, pawn, pawn shops, I don't think haggle. Well, the pawn I shop that's on... I think they give on, you a price and that's it. The, you either accept it or... The, the pawn shop that's, uh, that's on TV, the, the reality show, Hardcore Pawn, they haggle. They do? To a certain point. Yeah. No, actually, uh, actually, what happens is reverse. The system is reversed on uh, in this pawn shop. The owner offers you much less than you're entitled to get. To and see then you if you're go up a little to see if you're stupid enough to take it. Yeah, there you go. So it's re it goes in reverse. Yeah. The stock market is soaring. Unemployment is dropping to near six percent. Consumer confidence is up, and the sky didn't fall as Obamacare was implemented. But the real indicator of President Obama's success is the dredging up of the old standard Benghazi. Like the birthers, before them the GOP once again fumbles down the tired path 
of not standing for anything in particular, but staking its political future on simply tearing things down. Well, hey, if they cut the funding to protect the embassies, the fact of the matter is it's their fault. But the U.S. media doesn't mention that part. No, they do. Oh, if they do mention it, though, it's Secretary Clinton's fault or Obama's. You see how biased the media is? Forget about well, the... Well, they just found Daily Kohl's last night. They just found the New York Times uh, told another lie. About the, you know, the, F the FCC is looking at the, uh, you know, the net neutrality crap all this stuff. And they voted three to two to uh, not, so far anyway, allow the big boys to have their way on the net. Yeah. The Washington Post gave the story properly. The New York Times said it in the other direction that the FCC didn't do that. Hey, when Judith Miller was there, she was under the thumb of the, uh, the Bush administration, that they handed her the stories to put out there, etc., etc. Et Come on, the New York Times. Let's see. Ain't telling you the truth. Not only, not only do they keep Fukushima secret, the U.S. media, but they also keep the fact that there's a, uh, a huge undersea volcano in the, in the Caribbean that might be a threat to the U.S. Ooh. And I read that article online on Yahoo News and the, uh, the local media coming from New York City didn't say a word about that. Not one word. Yep. I was a bit confused about this strategy of the GOP. After all, the multiple investigations by both Democrats and Republicans have uncovered nothing more than a tragedy. But now I understand the true purpose. Mm -hmm. Keeping the voracious conservative media market fed in these improving economic times and fundraising. Nothing turns out the base and loosens the wallets of the top radio fringe faster and another flailing in the dark investigation into the Benghazi tragedy. The Benghazi tragedy. Is anyone truly naive enough to believe this latest kangaroo courthouse? Speaker John Boehner, or Boner, if that's what he wants to be called. Bonehead Boner. Uh -huh. Has assembled, has, has any other purpose than that of political blood? Well, I just wish the American people, not the rich part, but everybody else, I wish they would realize just how much power they, they do have and utilize it and get involved and, um, and also realize the power of the boycott. Well, I, the boycott. I, I saw something the other day and I don't have all the facts on it. This gentleman has released had released something trying to uh, tell jurors their rights and one of the rights was jury nullification and he was put out of business very quickly by i believe the judge or whatever jury nullification means despite the law as the judge gives it to you, you, as a jury, can nullify that. In other words, let's suppose some gentleman comes before you, eh, he had a microscopic amount of, uh, of marijuana on him or something, and he got arrested. Yeah. You, as the juror, and the rest of the jury also, can acquit him, despite what the judge says. Uh, they don't want you to know this. Especially if he has no uh, previous offenses. Whatever. Whatever it is. Yeah, I'm just talking uh, about the right of the amount, jury. A small amount of marijuana, if you're in a, a state with a stupid 
right wing law that says marijuana is illegal, yeah, uh, they can always say, well, you, you, you still possess well, let's marijuana, not, even though it's a tiny amount. Let's not get caught up in a second situation. I'm talking right. about the right of a juror and the right of a jury in respect to what the judge says. So they can and like what the law says. The jury can override that. That's judge. correct. It's like a veto. Now the judges and everything, they don't want you to know this. And of course the the, the, the newspapers and it said they don't want you to know this. They don't want you to know the power you actually have. By law as a jury. Yeah. Yeah, huh. uh, yeah you're right about that, because when I was being interviewed for jury duty, they never told me, no one ever told me about this in, in, the, or, in the orientation. No, never. They never tell you. Keep, keeping with the Benghazi theme, as the writer of this letter says in his conclusions, the yeah. truth, however inconvenient, should not take sides. Mm -hmm. I whole, wholeheartedly agree. Unfortunately, when looking for the truth, one needs to examine the existing facts. In the after aftermath of the Benghazi attacks, which claimed the lives of four Americans, seven official reports were conducted. One by the State Department Accountability Review Board, <coughs> excuse me, and four partisan House Republican reports from various oversight committees, in addition to two bipartisan Senate reports, Republicans have held more than 13 hearings, received 50 briefings, and reviewed more than 25,000 pages of documents. The simple fact of the matter is that despite spending millions of taxpayer dollars to respond to norm numerous congressional inquiries, none of these investigations uncovered any evidence of a conspiracy or a cover-up, or that the administration deliberately misled anyone. Mm -hmm. In addition, both President Obama and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton have provided information as requested by all committees without question, capped off by Clinton's direct testimony before Congress. Once again, House Republicans have demonstrated they would rather spend their time exploiting this tragedy, tragedy in a political ploy to motivate their base for the midterm elections, to attempt to discredit Clinton as a potential presidential candidate, and to fundraise at the expense of serving the American people. And isn't that the very definition of politicizing? Yeah, yes it is. Yep. And now we'll have something from the other side. We have time? Slightly, yes. Okay. Dana Milbank's first column was reprehensible. He reduced the death of Americans serving our country to an article about marketing. His angle in the piece is how the administration failed at spinning the horrific news. The murders of Ambassador Christopher Stevens and Sean Smith, Glenn Doherty and Tyrone Woods were not part of a scandal that should be referenced as a nothing murder. Mm -hmm. The murders were a tragedy. Americans should cause an uproar and advice to the White House on how to quell uproars of this nature is reprehensible. Americans were murdered because of the ineptitude of the White House. My hope is that the White House is just as outraged as I am 
that Milbank is giving them advice on how to market their ineptitude. Then we have Milbank's second caller. No one should quit Benghazi. Everyone should look to elucidate what went wrong in Benghazi so we don't have another. For both of Milbank's columns, there were political cartoons depicting the same mantra. Republicans are talking about Benghazi because the job numbers are up, so says the cartoon. Then we had new probe on Benghazi poses risks, weighing the pros and cons of how the Republicans and Democrats should handle the investigation into Benghazi to achieve political success. Benghazi is not about politics. It is about people. People who left behind families. Well, if that's true, why don't the Republicans give up? They got nothing. It's a nothing burger. And that uh, wraps up the first half of our show. Uh, it is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, as he is chowing down, I will be um, meeting with uh, our uh, voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, for the segment with him. So we'll be back. And the discussion is concerning? The discussion uh oh you forgot <laughs> i have it written down but oh fine but well uh, it'll it'll come to me i have it written down somewhere all right Okay, we're here with William H. Morrow. Now, Bill, I um, read a very disturbing article online today concerning uh, the, 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 the negative effects of uh, climate change. And uh, this was a scientific report from Yahoo News online. And what they stated was a cataclysmic event will take place whereas the western section of Antarctica is ready to drop, is ready to melt well, into the sea. Well, chunks bigger than some of our states have been doing that. Yeah, uh, Arctic too. Yeah, but Antarctica, the western section of Antarctica is going to drop into the sea and then melt and they, and they showed what the sea level rises will do to coastal regions of the United States, like yeah. South Florida. South That's Florida right. will be flooded completely. Well, you won't have any keys, probably, because they're already in water level. No, you won't know. The, 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 the great Florida Keys, where my sister is right now, yeah. will, will be no more. Yeah. It's water level. It can't take another inch or two of water. Miami also. Uh, go, all a lot of your Gulf, Louisiana, a lot of the Gulf, like yeah. Biloxi and all that area, too, will be hurting big time. It doesn't sure. take a lot. New York City will be flooded. New York City. Uh, I would not imagine it will affect the Great Lakes as well. Because they, they feed into the ocean. Well, the Great Lakes feed uh, into the ocean by way of the St. Lawrence River, where Montreal is. Uh, I'm assuming the, the sea levels will go into the St. Lawrence Seaway. And there is no answer. Well, what's, what, what's happening is this is the result of deregulated, deregulating big oil. Well, the bottom line, the sad thing is there's no answer. There's no cure. The, the, no, there's no cure because uh, the damage was already done by the big oil companies, well, the deregulated. Sci the scientists said in the paper, in an interview, or whatever, it's too late. You can't fix this and put a band-aid on it. No. You didn't learn what you were told way back, and now you want to play catch up. They didn't take the scientists' warning seriously. How are you going to refreeze those areas? You can't. Well, the atmosphere is already loaded with, uh, they say, the fluorocarbons by the petroleum industry from yeah. the smokestacks. That did most of the damage. You can't refreeze those areas. You know, then you destroy the rainforest, okay? You destroy the rainforest for profit, for, for greed. Well, you're for doing thousands of acres every day. Right. It's about to run out sooner or later. How many acres are there? Yeah, it's not just the Amazon. It's in the, in the East Indies, down by Indonesia, Borneo, and that, that area. So what is the answer? 
The answer Personally, is. I don't think there is an answer. The answer is. There is no answer. It's too late. Our political leaders have to be held accountable for corruption, for allowing... How far back do you go to the presidents or ones that have already deceased? How far do you go back? And which political leaders? Every nation or what? Uh, lately, the de well, deregulation started with Ronald Reagan. Uh, but they've been doing the Amazon rainforest so, and all that way before you know, Reagan. So you deregulate the oil companies, let them do what they want. So by letting them do what they want for profit, they're destroying the planet. Oh, this is what they wanted. So be it. You know, you made, your, you made your bed, sleep it. You reap what you you, 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 you shall sow. Right. As they say. It's People hard to say. But, uh, yeah. Well, uh, Mother Earth, what they call Gaia, Mother Earth has a way of uh, getting her revenge. Well, and, and what I might remember, too, is, is mankind will cease to exist anyway. That's the law, rule of nature. Yeah. Because every species ever has ceased to exist at some point. Man will not be here forever. That's true. Man is his own worst enemy. Man is doomed. Man will become extinct. Yeah. Well, look at the empires of the past that 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 eventually failed and, and became extinct. The Greeks, the Romans, well, the Egyptians, uh, 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 Hannibal, the Mayans, the Genghis Khan. Yeah, Hannibal was a Moor. Genghis Khan was a Mongol. 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 Well, so, uh, well, they say uh, yes, he's Mongolian. Mongol, right? Mongol who were Genghis Khan, you know, Hannibal, and what? Hannibal his, was his, North his, Africa. His that was, those were the Moors. Hannibal was Missourians, right? Uh, no relation to Roger Moore, though. Right, right. We're mooring a boat. <laughs> but, no, sadly, we are doomed. Well, you gotta, be, you gotta be honest. Oh, we'll get this fixed. Everything will be fine. But they no, all, won't. but they all became extinct for similar reasons. So, so you, evils of extinct. human nature. It's like, and it's gonna sound corny and out there, maybe along ancient aliens or whatever. If aliens come along with some great technology from their satellites or, or saucers or ships or whatever, that from up there they have some beam that can instantly refreeze the, the polar ice caps. Maybe. Be my guess. Better stop to this. Otherwise, what else is there? We yeah. better hope for something like that. That's right. Uh, you said flying sausages. You said sausages. Or s yeah. You said flying sausages. Known as the Hillshires. They come from way, way out. Hillshire Farms. No, no, no. no. These are the Hillshires. Little ukulele music. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> tiny bubbles. In the, but anyway, seriously, the Earth, this planet is dying because of greed. Overall, greed, corruption, it's all all wrapped up in the same is thing. Human it? nature. Is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. The money. What are they? What are they going to do? They're going to live in underground Look at the cities. Of our not the, just not just poor. It's got some pollution of all the oceans. So 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 the very rich are going to live in in deep underground. Excuse me. Sir. I. I haven't seen you all in a while. How have you been? Good. How are you? All right. How, how many husbands do you have now? <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, Bill, Billy, Billy's got some fans. He interrupted the show, but he's got some fans that he has to say hello to. Good friends. Good friends. Yeah, right. Everything good with school? Uh, it's good to see all of you. They don't talk, do they? Either, huh? I hope you realize. I got. I hope you realize. I got to edit this out now. Oh, uh, go ahead. All right. Anyway, anyway. Um, what I was saying was, um, what is? What are the very rich going to end up doing? They're going to live in you know, underground palaces deep in the earth, and and without coming to the surface. They already have that, you know, missile silos. Well, a lot of abandoned. people be bunker builders over the world. Yeah, well, you they use they prophets were uh, pre preppers. I mean, preppers, not prophets. Did you know? You know the abandoned missile silos from the Cold War. Mm -hmm. The the very rich bought them, and ha are now building well, really. underground underground yeah, like cities. Really. And they weren't that expensive. The government was basically giving them away for a song and a dance. Not the very rich, normal people bought them. The too. silos. They aren't expensive. Yeah. Well, they're usually out in out in the desert area, well, right? Out in the wasteland, like, like Nebraska and all of the prairies. They're prairies. On the prairies. It's not going to be right in the middle of Manhattan. No, 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 no. no it's, uh, but they went for a song and a dance, basically. And, uh, and then you have companies, that's all they do. They build doomsday shelters. For those that have the money, can buy it. They, they provide this... They've got, uh, they've had, they, they're equipped with anything you want, look, depending on how much you want to spend. I've seen them. I've seen Cameras, uh, flamethrowers to keep intruders out, uh, other kinds of weapon systems. I've seen the documentary on them. They're, 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 they're great, but how long will your supplies last until they run out? How much you put in, how much you eat. Right. And, uh, and, and when, and, and when you're, you can come to the surface 
of the planet safely. And do you yeah. want to? After a while, won't kind of get in your head like, what am I looking for? Yeah. Well, well, they would have to grow things hydroponically with uh, with uh, sun lamps. Uh, you know. Well, then you have some of those other government establishments, establishments like, this, like the Strategic Air Command or whatever, built right inside of a mountain. And their, their doors are four or five, six inches thick of solid steel. They could live almost right down there. Well, lead too, right? Uh, lead is. Well, it's got all kinds of compounds and things we don't even know of. I'm sure. Yeah, radiation but can't nothing penetrate. Nothing can really penetrate that. Not even the biggest nuclear weapon can penetrate yeah. that. Well, unfortunately, uh, well, we're the. Well, it's only a few of you uh, surviving. Yeah. Well, I mean, the mainstream is doomed. Forget about it. the mainstream can't afford anything like that. And if everybody is basically going to die, would you want to survive? Would you want to live for the rest of you your already, life? You already have guilt feelings in the human brain or psyche, per se, where whenever you've had the only survivor of a tra tragic accident, like a plane crash or whatever, they always, un most of them undergo yeah. severe depression because they question, why am I the only one living? So what happens in that case, too? They, all of mankind, yeah. for, for the most part, is gone. What would you question them, too, as, as well? You know what's sad also? All the species of animals that have become extinct because of man. Well, not just because of man, but because of other things, too, in the early days, like the, with the dinosaurs and the asteroids and what have well, I mean all the other animals. Like you know, A lot of them are all over. Like not just always because of man. And it's not always because of man hunting and destroying them all. Because man has also re regrown and repollinated a yeah. lot of them. Where they're well, like the dodo eggs. bird and the uh, the great auk and the Ca uh, Carolina parakeets extinct. The, uh, the Tasmanian tigers extinct. But it wasn't from hunting, per se. You know, a lot of them was just they, they just weren't reproducing that well. They, they got, like I said, every species ends. I heard the dodo uh, it became extinct because the European uh, colonists would, they were so easy to, 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 to capture and kill. So, yeah, kill. so that so it's over over har it was over harvesting for food. That's what happened. Wait, they ate them. But it was over harvesting. In other words, they don't think it's like fishing, commercial fishing. They don't think. Well, we have to, if, if we run out of this species of fish, we won't be able to catch well, them. That's anymore. why you have far salmon farms and other fish type farms. You know, and they, 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 they put them in pens in their own habitat of water, and they just reproduce. Yeah. And that's why you also have laws. You can only fish certain breeds, types, certain months, and you're only able to bring so many pounds or whatever times per fish you can per only, season. You can only catch a certain size. A certain size, yeah. a certain weight, the whole bit. You know those aquaculture farms are usually not hy hygienic. They found... Uh, a lot of pollutants in the waters of those uh, ponds. Why aren't they filtering? We could, we'd go back to greed again. Yeah, they can, they can filter those. Of course they can filter those. You know, they know what, what, what it takes to, keep, to maintain that water for the, the fish types consistency or whatever. Yeah. Like. Exactly, exactly. But they don't care. They don't, that, see, you hit the nail on it. a lot of it. They just don't care. They, so. they, they just don't care. And uh, I just, I just want to, as a consumer tip, I want to let people know, when you go online, like let's say you're on Facebook, a lot of, some uh, uh, websites will ask you to submit your cell phone number for, to verify your identity. Don't give anything. Don't do it. Because, Don't give anything. Because I, I did it, and every little thing in creation was going on my voicemail, and the phone was ringing off, off the hook day and night. What was this? Until I removed it. No, this was the past couple of days. What just happened? Yeah, it was. Uh, my phone was going off, and you know. For what? People selling things or what? Everything, every little thing that's happening on Facebook, every little thing. And well, you know how I feel about all that Facebook gonna, stuff, anyway. But it's, it's gonna, but it's gonna use up all my minutes. Uh -huh. if, you know, I mean. No, I had to, t I had to remove it. So. When you, a lot of people are very, a lot of companies are tricky online. They'll ask you to do something and they'll make it look like it's in your best interest, but it's not. It's in, in their Especially interest. Especially if they ask you your social, social security ne number. Yeah. Never, give never you ever power. give you personal information. Then you're primed for identity. Yeah. But you know, what, you know what they do? They flood you with spam. 
soon as they get your... They're over eager for money for some reason. It's almost like everybody up yeah. can get new tricks and tactics to take. Well, now the spam goes right in front of your face. I don't, I don't like that. See, the advertisement used to be on the side when you're looking at a computer screen. It used to be on the side. Now they, they're shoving things in front of your face. That's not right. What if you're doing some work there or whatever? And, you know, yeah. Which is why when I was a screenwriter, I never, never went to a computer. I always use my electronic typewriter. I want a clear white page in front of me. I don't like icons on the borders or anything. Yeah. And of the screenwriters I met when I was in Hollywood with Ray, every single one said, Billy, we all went to computers. We came back to our typewriters. I like the sound, the feel, well, a little bit. Computers have their use, and they have their areas where they're not to be used. Well, you, no, you could type in privacy uh, with nothing. You just go to... Uh, I like the feel of the full-size keyboard, the whole bit, the click, the sound, the whole bit. Well, though the keyboard is pretty, pretty, is actually better on a computer. I don't know. Yeah. I love my, I love my swing tack. It was the best. You just like to hear the same reason why you like muscle cars. You want to hear blah 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 blah. Sound of the keys hitting. As opposed to an electric vehicle, right? Oh, I don't like both. Please, <laughs> electric No, I want a full muscle car. Any kind of V, you know, I mean, uh, v, V6, 8, 10, 12, yeah. oh, I like a, a true muscle car. So you, you get a, so you get a hydrogen-powered combustion engine, you know. Right. Or, or that the, the fuel that Willie Nelson's making out, out of soybean oil, out of... Um, oh, and now they, call, they found out this week soy, soy, soy something, soy something can cause a kidney or liver damage. Yeah, the genetically modified soy from Monsanto, yes. Yeah. You, ha you have to have organic soy. But did you know that so many countries around the world are saying no to a genetically modified garbage from Monsanto? They, they're putting their foot down. Where, and where are they based out of? Monsanto, it's a... Uh, I, I think I think I mean where I think they're in the northern Midwest. There are I think you right, like three M. Like kind of Mi I Michigan, maybe I don't know. I'm, yeah. Don't quote me on this. And they should be a phenomenal, great company. No, they 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 made Agent Orange that they spread they use in Vietnam. Well, that's a wonderful. Movie. Everybody should shower in that. <laughs> Yeah, he's being funny right now. And any chemical that's bad, the, the pesticides, Roundup Ready, it's killing off the bees. Monsanto makes that. Recumbent bovine growth hormone that they give dairy cows, Monsanto makes that. Um, but they used to, I don't know if they still are, they used to be very big if I remember, in plastics. Yes, back in the day. Yeah, back in the day. I don't know if they do that anymore. They got uh, more of the pesticides, it seems like. They broke away. They, they broke away, and they... Oh, they even... Um, yeah, anything toxic, they make. It seems like. It seems like. But uh, it's, it's really... You know, once the bees die, with no bees, you know, mankind only has enough food for four days. Bees are... Very important. I mean, honey is phenomenal. The yeah. only food that will never spoil. Well, people don't realize just how important the bees are. Oh, incredible. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, they're, they're all the buzz. But they're all buzz. And, they're and, all the buzz. And, and, and you know what? If um, you know what they drive, little hummers. Little hummers. <laughs> and I just hope uh, things work out for the bees. Uh, because even the A's. Even the A's. Um, because it was meant to be. <laughs> but anyway. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Thank you very much, William H. Moore the always, third. Everybody. Yes. Till next time, we'll see you and bye bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we are back. On your way back there, would you mind hand me my glasses, please? Sure, certainly. Or certainly, as Curly. Certainly, as Curly from the Stooges used to say.
We're back. How was your lunch? I'm full, baby. Good. It's, it's great to be full. It's great to be full. Uh, you know, uh, you know, the, I read a funny banner where it says, if, if you think um, love is the most uh, pleasurable emotion, well, you, you, you probably haven't had a diarrhea frantically looking for a bathroom. You know, like when you got to go number two real bad. <laughs> that, that, that's, that, has, that, that pleasure rivals uh, romance. I don't think that's a pleasure. That's a relief. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so anyway, thank you. Uh, William H. Uh, here we go. Thank you, Willie, William H. Moore the third for a wonderful meeting that we had. Well, a wonderful show. Uh, so now we will uh, sink our teeth back into these readings. And, and, and just like our commercial says, the very best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. And of course, uh, William Morrow did a great job uh, on our promo commercial. So. Citalopram, uh -oh. an antidepressant better known as Celexa. Celexa, has a remarkable side effect. Oh, gee. A new study has found in mice bred to develop Alzheimer's disease oh, shit. and in healthy human volunteers the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor or SSRI drives down the production of a protein called beta amyloid which in the brains of those with Alzheimer's clumps together in sticky plaques. That's not good. And is thought to short circuit the brain's wiring. Oh gosh. In study participants free of Alzheimer's disease or any other neuropsychiatric affliction, mm -hmm. Selexa was found to reduce the concentration of beta amyloid in the cerebrospinal fluid by 38%. Researchers see that as a clear sign that beta amyloid protein in the brain declines in those taking the antidepressants. In older mice bred to develop an animal version of Alzheimer's disease, a 28-day regimen of Selexa arrested the growth of beta amyloid plaques and reduced the appearance of new plaques by 78%. In healthy volunteers, the slowdown in beta amyloid protein production was virtually immediate. All well and good. However, however, Mr. Gary No has a more natural approach. Yeah, I know he does. I know he does. He spews radioactive fire. Really? Raises city and pummels creatures from Earth and beyond. But even Godzilla needs a good lawyer sometimes. After all, you don't survive 60 years in the movie business without taking some fights to court. For decades, attorneys acting on behalf of Godzilla's owner, Toho Productions, Tokyo-based Toho Company, 
LT have amassed a string of victories fighting counterfeiters and business titans such as Comcast and Honda really? along the way. The opponents have come from all corners of pop culture, TV commercials, video games, rock music, and even the liquor industry. <laughs> There's a, uh, isn't there a commercial running on cable now with Godzilla in there? Yeah, he's eating cars. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. The litigation has kept Godzilla's brand thriving and helped pave the way for commercial and merchandising tie-ins that will accompany the monster's return to the big screen on Friday. That was yesterday, I believe. Or was it last week? No, it was, no, it was, it was, yeah, it was Friday, I think. Very recently. After a 10-year hiatus. Godzilla's image is for sale, but permission is needed. Toho's attorneys use copyright and trademark laws as effectively as Godzilla uses his tail and claws to topple buildings and swat opponents. Their court injunctions have permanently whacked music books, music, books, and movies from store shelves. Well, I was always a big Godzilla fan from way back. I, unfortunately, Aye. unfortunately, my whole collection, my entire collection of Godzilla movies, uh -oh. uh, I would say 99% of them are on VHS tapes. Oh so dear! I, I have no way of, you know, playing them. Uh -huh. You know, but uh, anyway, you're you're supposed to uh, try out your new device to see if. How it works. And I gotta learn my other device too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least you have the you have the user manual. Since the mid 1980s, Chuck Shepard of the Los Angeles law firm of Greenberg Glusker has been Godzilla's lead lawyer, filing suits like the one against a wine called Cabzilla. Uh, you know what? The word Zilla is used quite often in anything that is supposed to be like huge yeah. or to give a, a tremendous effect. You know, they, they use it often in advertising. <clears throat> Zilla, some, whatever, Zilla, yeah. That resulted in a winemaker being forced to dump its stock of Cabernet Sauvignon down the drain. Why? Just take the labels off. Why waste the product? Godzilla is just as protected as Mickey Mouse. Shepard said in a recent interview. Toho's lucrative licensing efforts, which include endorsements, toys, comic books, video games, even official wine and sake sake brands. So you cannot use not even Zilla in anything. Well, uh, no, we don't know that. We don't know what, what the winemaker was doing beyond just yeah. the title of the yeah, wine. Yeah, because because Capzilla should not be protected. It, it, yeah, because what if somebody? Uh, what if somebody? Uh, what if religious people use the word God? Is Toho Productions going to sue them? I mean, you know, Zilla exactly. is Zilla is part of Godzilla. Well, then again, so is God part of Godzilla. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's ridiculous. It shouldn't uh, stand up in court. Right. The word, yeah, using the word Zilla. Unless Mr. Winemaker had a picture of Godzilla on his bottle. Ah. Whatever. You know, that, that may be that, uh, that's an under infringement. That's understandable. Yes. yes. Uh, let's see. Toho's... Ooh. Okay, we agree. Since 1991, Toho's attorneys have filed at least 32 copyright and trademark lawsuits and countless warning letters 
gaining court injunctions in a quarter of the cases. Most others have resulted in settlement agreements that, while confidential, result in products disappearing from the marketplace. Since the late 1990s, Shepard has worked Soho cases with attorney Aaron Moss, whose high-end Century City office is cluttered with a mix of legal filings and official and unofficial Godzilla merchandise. Mm -hmm. Some of the spoils of court, court victories include a now out of circulation copy of rapper Pharaoh Monch's 1999 album that improperly used Godzilla's theme music. Yeah, yeah, that is true. They, uh, um, I have, um, I have heard um, other songs using the theme. Yeah. And a two-foot-tall dog toy called Toughzilla. There you go again. Toho is not out there to extract a pound of flesh. They need to protect their brand. Oh, I don't know if this is, I guess it is. They're showing a picture of a can of some kind of liquid, maybe booze, maybe something, with, with Godzilla's picture on it. That's a lawsuit. And it says, Mesha, Mesha Hopzilla. Maybe it's beer. Yeah, it's, it's a craft it's beer. beer. I've yeah. seen it. It's a, it's yeah, a, well, it must be okayed by Godzilla, because it's still out there, right? Yeah, I've yeah. seen Hopzilla. I've even seen, uh, uh, there's even a craft beer called Hoptopus, uh, and it has a, a, a draw, a, a painting of a hop, you know, which is what is required to make the beer bitter. Uh, I guess you would call it a grain or a fruit. A hop with tentacles sticking out of it sure. on the bottom. Hop, hop, hop the puss. You know, but the hopzilla is still out there. You know? Oh, 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 I just read the caption here, and that's an unauthorized beer. Unauthorized? Unauthorized. So you saw the last of it. Okay. <laughs> when you saw it, that was the last of it. It was the it. last of it. Yeah. The last of it. Litigation often starts with a cease and desist letter. And a company's reaction to it often determines whether the case escalates. When you have something as famous as Barbie or as Godzilla, you're well served to protect that. Uh, Larry Eisler said, Eisler represents toy maker Mattel, and noted that trademarks for some uh, popular products such as the trampoline and escalator have fallen into the public domain, making them easier and cheaper for companies to copy. But Godzilla's trademarks could last forever if they are properly handled. Mm -hmm. Godzilla debuted in Japan in the 1954 hit film Gojira. Oh, oh. Kojira is the actual Japanese word for Godzilla. Uh -huh. I think it represents some kind of sea god, sea monster or sea god in Japan. And then don't forget, don't forget the American version with Raymond Burr. That was, I think, 1958. But has proven to be just as popular in the United States. That's made him an attractive spokes monster. <laughs> You know, there's, there's a Godzilla um, um, uh, ma magazine, fan fan magazine, like like you know, uh, comic book. It's a Godzilla comic book that's actually um, Toho product. It's no, it's a Toho Productions fan magazine, and the people that that uh, that send blogs or whatever uh, about. The monsters, they, they act like they really exist. 
you know, like there are, there are people who are comic book fanatics that, that behave like the superheroes are real. Like those people in the virtual world. Yeah, get a life, man. You know, the people that go to conventions. Godzilla has appeared in ads for Snickers candy bars. Yes, that's true. I've seen it. Nike shoes. Yep. And Doritos chips. Yeah. Oh, the uh, Godzilla from the, the the latest movie, eating the cars. That was a I think that was a Subaru commercial, because he spits out the Subaru, and the Subaru takes off. He he, he eats all the other cars though. Oh, nice. Yeah. As well as in marketing for the original Sim Sim, Sim City computer game. Honda minivans and the subway's five dollar foot long specials. Yet those last three uses weren't properly licensed and prompted Toho to sue. Godzilla's appearance in the 1991 Rose Parade <laughs> sparked Toho's first court fight with Honda. Decked out in a tuxedo and top hat, American Honda's float was engineered to make it look like Godzilla was traipsing down the street. Was he waving to the to the, the public? Crowd, yeah. Oh God! The next day, Toho called Shepard. Godzilla's image hadn't been licensed for the float, and the ensuing lawsuit lasted more than a year before Godzilla prevailed. <laughs> oh, he did prevail? Yeah. Well, if Godzilla is owned by Toho, why do they use the statement that Godzilla wins? It, it's almost like Godzilla is suing his owner, Toho. Honda denied that their float depicted Godzilla, despite advertisements and a memo Mm -hmm. about the float describing the creature by name. It was one of many cases that featured what Moss calls the dinosaur defense. Defendants sometimes claim their products aren't Godzilla, but simply dinosaurs. It's a dubious argument because the products often feature a spiky spine similar to Godzilla's or depict the creature in a cityscape. Godzilla may munch on cities, but dinosaurs didn't. Technicality, sir. It, well, it just doesn't work. Why does it breathe fire and stomp on cities? Why doesn't... Uh why doesn't Godzilla just do us all a favor and stomp on uh, uh, corporate American uh, main, main offices? Uh -huh. Godzilla has suffered one notable loss. Yeah. Uh -huh. In 1981, before Shepard's firm was involved, a federal appeals court dismissed a lawsuit by Tohu against Sears Roebuck and Company filed over a line of trash bags. The retailer had named Bagzilla. Yeah, you see, but I, it's like what I said before. Yeah, but they lost. You mean Toho won? Lost. Toho lost? Yeah. Now why? That would be interesting. The bags use of a Godzilla-esque creature represented a humorous caricature and not a serious threat to Toho's business interests, the court ruled. One ongoing fight for Godzilla's lawyers is against a Luini, Luini, Louisiana brewery which is being sued over its Mecca Hopzilla beer line. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the case ain't over yet. 
It's not. Ongoing fight, it's say. The giant metal lizard on the beer cans and tap handles is too similar to Godzilla's mechanical version. Mecha Godzilla. Yes. Toho's lawyers argue. Yeah, there's a movie called Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. The brewery contends its beer is a parody and is relying in part on the Sears case. God bless Godzilla. <laughs> eh? Yeah, he definitely has longevity, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they're going to protect that uh, that copyright for I don't know how, how long they're going to get away yeah, with well, it. Well, if Toho has children, uh, I'm sure they will inherit Toho production, so... Yeah, but you're supposed to only have these you know, copyrights for so many years. And then it goes into the public domain. How the people can make money the, on then it? Then how come, come on. how come back in the day when I used to use classical music as the themes for my uh, for our video shows on YouTube, uh, back in the day they were allowed, but now you, you can't really do it. Uh, I mean, they won't, they won't, they won't remove the video per se. You know, if it has cla a classical song. But they'll send you this third-party copyright warning to get permission. But you know, I'm talking about a public domain classical song. Exactly. But somebody, some music company, or someone claims the song because it was played by somebody, but doesn't like uh, box um, concerto. Uh, Concerto, Box, Brandenburg, Concerto, pretty much sound... It's in the public domain. Sound the same, no matter who plays it? Exactly. Therefore, it's in the public domain. And nobody can claim it. Yeah, but I, I, I get these... Um, I know, but... Third-party warnings, and you can't... And I can't monetize the video. Yeah, well, that's what YouTube is trying to protect against. You making money on it. See? Because when you make money on it, you got to get permission. Utilize it. I gotta get permission from Johann Sebastian Bach. Exactly. Dig you him must up go from to the his grave. grave and you must commune with him. Oh wait a minute. Won't the Long Island Psyche help you out there? Or that guy that's on television who speaks to the dead? Hey? Eh? Yeah. There you go. Well I um that's why I use my uh, African drum playing so, uh, tunes as a theme songs that, that's that's me playing the drum my drum because uh, if I can't even use a classical song as a theme to a show then uh, I'm just not going to use anybody's song as a theme to the show I'm going to use my stuff which happened to be you know the African drum I'm not going to play the Jews harp as a theme song because that would people would laugh <laughs> or, the, or the slide whistle Ronald Reagan was president when an estimated 300 American soldiers were slaughtered in their barracks during a truck bomb attack in Beirut, Lebanon. Those were Marines, by the way. Reagan was not blamed. And I got news for you. Reagan got them out of there so fast that when your hair turned gray. Speaking of running from terrorists. But was he ever blamed for it? No. Barack Obama was president when our mission was attacked in Benghazi. Killing four civilians, including the U.S. ambassador. Now! The President and then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton are blamed. What is wrong with this scenario? Well, I can tell you what's wrong. Number one, he's a Democrat and black, and Reagan was a Republican and right. white. And the corporations 
behind the the white wealthy Republicans do not want a Democrat in the White House or or they don't want a black man in the White House either no. they don't want either in the White House so he's, he's a target he's a target they're using like a woodpecker technique peck 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 you know like every little thing like like a woodpecker pecking on your skull or like the al dente defense throw it against the wall see if it sticks that's funny Hold on. then ring the freaking bells Did, did me did me fixing the levity bells lower the the volume of them? Uh, I don't think so. I find it so typical and disingenuous that Democrats call the GOP's inquiry into the Benghazi tragedy, where our ambassador and three others were killed, a political ploy. Oh boy. What the hell is it? Yet Democrats in New Jersey find justification in the continuing probe into the George Washington Bridge lane closings in an attempt to embarrass Governor Christie. I guess that a traffic jam is more important and worthy of investigation than the deaths of our diplomats. Now here's a guy that's really off the wall. There were 11 investigations, plus four independent ones with newspapers and etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now they're starting a new one. And they called jo John Kerry, now Secretary of uh, State, oh. with a subpoena before the committee. So what is he saying? That it's not worthy of investigation. It's been investigated to death. And guess what? What? They still haven't found anything. Nope. But ask the GOP in Congress to do something meaningful. Mm -hmm. And they don't do crap. No, they don't. They don't do crap. Certainly don't. With talk of Republicans taking over the Senate and making more gains in the House, I don't understand how anyone in the middle class could vote for them, considering their support of the so-called Paul Ryan budget and other actions taken by them in Congress. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the poor and, and the uh, disabled and the elderly, they might as well just kiss their asses goodbye if the Republicans take over Washington. Exactly. Really. Under the budget proposed by Paul Ryan, not only would the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act be repealed, removing millions off the health care rolls and placing their eligibility and benefits back at the mercy of insurance companies. But Medicare would be effectively eliminated no. by creating a voucher system. And how does how do seniors get um, get proper health care under a voucher system? The voucher system is something like that uh, system you ran into where they give you so much a year. If you use that up, too bad. Oh, that was hard. That's horrible. Yeah, of course it is. That's shit. That's not real health care. It's not insurance. Real health care is what is uh, is what uh, is uh, implemented in the Scandinavian countries. That's real health care. Uh. Where was that? Voucher system. And health aid to poor adults and children would be serious. Would be food stamps. Oh yeah, you can forget about that too. Even though it's a drop in a bucket, what they give you. Other cuts would be seen in Pell Grants, 
that are needed by millions for college education, Head Start, Job Training, Health Care for Women, and numerous other programs relied upon by the middle and lower middle class to survive and or advance in society. Have you, um, did you ever read that banner about just how friggin' greedy a, um, an American university really is? And it, uh, it, of course. It, it starts, it starts at, okay, now you have, uh, now you owe a hundred thousand dollars in tuition when you graduate, but then it mentions all the other things that the university pulls on you to ring up a even higher bill, astronomic bill that you will never pay off and uh, and then you turn around and you look at real governments like the Scandinavian countries uh -huh. where good health care a decent retirement is a right taking care of the poor and um, um, a, a, a good complete edu education including higher education including college they're all rights, not privileges. That's correct. They're all rights, not privileges. It's because the Scandinavian countries and the other countries that have health care care about their people. We don't care about people in this country. We yeah. care about corporations and the wealthy. Well, what the money. What the Scandinavians country, what the Scandinavian government said is that uh, a. Um, a healthy, a well-educated population, well-educated citizens is our future. That's correct. Which I guess, which includes also healthy, it's always been known. healthy, well-educated citizens is our future. That's correct. However, in Paul Ryan's budget, benefits for the very rich and corporations would be protected. It's so obvious. Their agenda, their objectives are so obvious and exactly. in your face. How could anybody in their right mind re-elect a Republican ever? They I did it in New Jersey. I asked that question on Facebook last night. You're dressed in blue today? Well, the blue state of New Jersey re-elected Chris Christie. Ooh. Uh, I don't, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Somebody either. please Explain it to me. Explain it to me. <laughs> what is going on? A northeastern blue state re-electing Chris Christie. Where where Barbara Bono kicked his ass in the two debates she had with him. That's the Democratic uh, opponent. Opponent. Barbara <coughs> Bono. I still say she should have picked a, a male lieutenant governor running mate. She should have mixed up the gender. Congressional mis Republicans mistake, Barbara. also have blocked minimum wage legislation, extension of unemployment insurance, and even such previously bipartisan and job creating measures as infrastructure repair. Oh, heaven forbid we should have that, right? Let's say, is it like almost six years since Obama's election? first yeah. time around and we still don't have infrastructure subsidies and monies going to uh, the two the first two years of uh, the Obama administration the uh, Democrats controlled the House the Senate and the White House of course the Oval Office we could have had a lot the funding for infrastructure we could have had the single-payer uh, plan of uh, health care, sing single payer, uh, a public option. The, the tax burden could have been put back on the rich. Corrections for Wall Street. Like it was before Reagan. Uh, Wall Street, the, the, the crooked bums could have been in prison, thrown in prison. Mm -hmm. All these things could have happened within the first two years when the Democrats had control of Washington. But they didn't. 
After speaking to a number of middle class Republican supporters, I have come to believe why they are still voting against their better interests. Mm -hmm. They have been brainwashed into such a hatred of President Obama they do <clears throat> that they do not even consider the facts. They don't because they're so racist. If the GOP takes over and their policies implemented, middle-class people on both sides of the political aisle will be hurt. They just don't get it. They don't want the black man in the White House. That's it. They're racist. That's it. Pure and simple. If, if, if someone doesn't do what's best for the uh, American people and the country, out. And uh, <clears throat> usually, you know, they, they do not get reelected. But what I'm saying is that they don't look at the facts and stick to the, to the real truth and do what's best for the country. The only other reason I can think of is racism. And that is sad. Or being beholden to the wealthy and the big corporations. They well, are your constituents, not the voters. That's that's very true. That's very true. That's the Republican constituents. They they want what makes them think the world population as a whole would accept a a slave labor job or or next to a slave labor job. Uh, you think people are going to get their asses up in the morning and work long hours for for chicken feed? Not if things are as they are, but they can be made worse. And then they will, or they will perish. You're talking about a, de a state of desperation. That's correct. That's correct. And that, that's their object. And that's what this, um, this bitch of a store, well she wasn't a general store manager. When I was a kid, I worked in a, in a market, and one of the store managers, uh, a woman, we couldn't stand her. We called her Helmet Head. Her name was Anita Brock, and she uh, had so much hairspray in her hair, but she looked like one of those conservative women. And we had a, a little political discussion, and she said, this is how I look at it. If, if a person was desperate enough, they will accept anything you threw at them. Anything you, you, any situation, any bad situation, they'll, they'll learn to accept it if they're desperate enough. The Bible has it during so, the tribulation. So people will be eating dung and their own children. So this concept of the oligarchy and the plutocracy today, this concept is not new. Mm. I mean, if, if Anita Brock made that statement decades ago hey hey Ayn Rand goes back to the 50s right and that's where a lot of your idiots yeah. today uh, go back to their uh, yeah. policies making and then Milton Friedman perpetuated the Ayn Rand way of thinking right Alan Greenspan Milton Friedman Paul Ryan Rand Paul Ron Paul all of these people have a legacy in their background with Ayn Rand. You know, uh, uh, I've seen uh, quotes posted by, uh, from Milton Friedman and uh, the Koch brothers going way back, dating way back. And uh, they, they did not, these quotes sounded very, uh, they sounded something like a progressive would say. Yeah. So something swayed them. Something in their life changed them from one opposite to the other. Read. Once you get yours, you turn against those who don't have. Yeah. Because it's a self-protecting mechanism. Yeah. In well, the old days, they lived within castles. 
to keep the riffraff out. And it, castle wall, yeah. Their fear of democracy is that the riffraff will gain control. Well, do, doesn't don't uh, uh, doesn't the very rich when they live when they have their mansions, their estates, don't they have like a very high secure fence around Gates. their gated community around their acreage? But now for they security. But now they can move to Dubai or wherever. See? Yeah, yeah. They owe no allegiance. No, <coughs> they don't the have any States allegiance. Of America. They don't, there is no allegiance. No corporation does. Owes no allegiance to the United States of America. And neither does any wealthy person. Because they can get the hell out of here so damn fast and make your head turn. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, all, of their, all of their dwellings, all of their mansions, going way back to medieval times, uh, back then it was in a fortress now it's a uh, it's a gated community with security they uh, they, they always have this uh, this fear that other people want what they got it's like you know even with a let like, them eat cake like you ever notice that like a rich girl or a rich ma a rich man or boy always tends to date one another Within of, his class, within his his or her class, like like you'll never see the rich girl dating a a, a, a man that works at Burger King, or 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 vice versa, or or a man dating a girl who's a clerk at Dunkin' Donuts. They, and if they do, it's certainly not taken seriously. They're they uh, if if one drives a Ferrari, the other one certainly drives a Mercedes. Mm. It's not like the the BMW, and then you know, the girl has the BMW convertible, and the guy drives a uh, Nissan Sentra or something like that. No, no, it's never that way. It, it, you think it's because they're so paranoid about about a a poor person theirs. want wanting some of their money? It's all about keeping theirs. They're they're worried about losing. Any Let's amount. Go back in history and look at all Any the, uh, you know, the barbarians come in and then and, and take over Rome. And, uh, you know, it's it, on and on and on and on. They try to protect themselves with walled cities. They try to protect themselves with castles. They try to protect themselves with this, that, and the other thing. Sounds Gated like community. It sounds like unproven or moving. Unproven paranoia to me. Yeah. It's like paranoia if you're that rich. I mean. Well. How is a poor guy who's dating their rich daughter, how is he going to take the family fortune? Well, they're not thinking of one person, I tell you. They're thinking of in a democracy, the riffraff have the power, and they can make the laws. They had to do something about that, right. and they did it in this country. It's an oligarchy. Fascism corporations married to the government so they have successfully done that they are in control and they want to maintain right. that like back back in the days of Robin Hood when you could not hunt in the king's forest yeah you could not hunt the king's deer or whatever he owned everything right okay they did the same thing in Ireland you know the the they took over all the agriculture of Ireland and and the Irish could only have whatever they could fit on their little bit of land around their cottage, you know, uh, whatever farming they could do for themselves. But the all the industries, beef, uh, uh, commercial fishing, it, it all belonged to the King of England. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's uh, it's about selfishness. It's about greed. It's uh, it's a it's about the obsession growing out of control. And then you ask yourself, Increased. well, how did these things come into being? Mm. If the people have always had the power, how did these things come into being? How did the people get hoodwinked? Into respecting one person as a leader, etc., etc., etc. How do how do people get hoodwinked into believing the lies of Fox News? Oh, Even that's a mystery. Oh boy. Or how do people? How does Rush Limbaugh have any? ratings at all with the idiotic things that he says.
exactly. It's, it's due to something down below. And as I say, the lack of empathy thingy has got to be a hormone thing, oxytocin. Yeah, well, um, but I mean the teabaggers... It's more than just psychological. The teabaggers actually believe the lies that the deficit is the fault of the poor that are on social services. Yeah. <laughs> they yes, actually they believe that nonsense. Yes, they do. They believe that crap. Oh, man. Proteins! Huh? Protein. Protein, okay. Are essential building blocks for muscles. Oh, yeah. Internal organs. Blood cells. Amino acids, yeah, protein. Hormones. You know how to make a hormone, don't you? You uh, don't pay her. You don't pay her. <laughs> ah, excuse me, lady. What do, you call, what do you call a whore with a runny nose? Full. Oh, jeez. You, know you know who has... All those fantastic one-liners, raunchy one-liners, is my, my friend Rick Brown. Well, from, then Comedy Central is looking for him. I know. From Cal from uh, Southern California. Okay, continue. Enzymes, disease-fighting antibodies. Weight loss diets packed with protein are touted just about everywhere. And they really can help you shed the fat. But a new report that you should not ignore uncovers long-term risks of eating a diet loaded with animal protein. Mm, yeah, red meat. Yeah, red meat should be in moderation. Eating even what's a moderate amount for any of you, for many of you, of beef, pork, and lunch meats quadruples your odds for fatal cancer. Oh, lunch meats? Definitely. Process, process anything. Process uh, meats? I would say so. Uh, but if the animals, if the animals were not loaded with uh, hormones and antibiotics, you know, if they were organic livestock, we wouldn't have to worry about this. University of Southern California researchers recently announced that the folks who were at highest risk for deadly cancers were eating 100 grams or three and a half ounces or more of meat protein daily on a 2,000 calorie per day diet. And a heavy meat habit in middle age boosts cancer risk just as much as smoking. In fact, it increases the odds for an earlier death by 74 percent. Wow. These findings join a wave of new science suggesting that the type of protein and amount of protein that you choose to eat can be a health bomb or a healthy boost. So here are the best ways to put tasty, satisfying protein on your plate, worry-free. Well, legumes is one. Right size. Stick with the Institute of Medicine's guidelines. 46 grams of protein a day for women, 56 for men. Yeah, yeah, that's that's old hat. That's uh, yeah, those are the recommendations. What about the size and activity of the individual? It will help control appetite. Some government surveys estimate that the average American adult eats 69 to 113 grams of protein a day, and you can bet. It mostly comes from meat. Yep, and uh, unfortunately, if it comes from um, fast food chains, 
it is it is there's very little beef actual beef in there what about the worms from mcdonald's mcdonald's is allowed to use worm meat uh by the fda mcdonald's is allowed to use uh uh meat byproducts pateed and and and, and saturated with ammonia oh, and now byproduct can be anything just the good beef hamburger please yeah and ammonia to you know it's toxic to humans and on a daily basis you want to aim for the amount of protein found in a four ounce salmon fillet an ounce of nuts especially walnuts yeah almonds walnuts sure the only nuts with omega-3s walnuts yes eight ounces of skim milk two tablespoons of pure peanut butter yeah and a little bit in whole grains and veggies absolutely plus a cup of oatmeal for you guys yeah oatmeal is good brown rice is good quinoa is phenomenal phenomenal grain um, I my favorite snack is uh, peanut butter on a banana is your name Elvis Presley why he liked he liked that too on bread banana on bread and peanut butter oh okay and I'm not sure whether it was grilled it might have been like grilled cheese I, I'm not sure about that part no I'm I, no no I don't go for that I just I just take a spoon and just put the peanut butter uh, on the on the on the banana itself and then eat it and then take another spoonful I mean I don't put the spoon in my mouth I don't, I'm not a double dipper but I mean I, I bite the banana and then I take another spoonful slap it on there you may need more if you are extremely active like I said before over age 65 or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Yeah, legumes are a very good source of, of proteins, especially when you mix it with whole grains and you combine them. Cut way back on red meat and processed meats. Saturated fat packed red meats put you at risk for heart stopping atherosclerosis. Roses. Don't forget the two super nutritional seeds, uh, pumpkin and sunflower seeds, are very good for you. But that's not the only way they threaten your cardiovascular system and other vital bodily functions. They also contain carnitine, lecithin, and choline, amino acids that are transformed into T M A O or trimethyl trimethylamine N oxide. It's a long one, right? Yeah. By our intestinal bacteria. When you eat egg yolks, processed meats beef and pork. TMAOs increase your risk for heart attack. Stroke. Memory loss and cancer. Not to mention more wrinkles. Mm -hmm. Poor orgasms. Orgasms, quality, and impotence. Yeah. And stay away from the nitride preservatives found in bacon, lunch meat, ham, and sausage. Uh, no, they salamis. They don't, uh, 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 a sausage that you have to cook does not have sodium nitrate or, uh, in it. it uh, it's, it's the uh, processed meat cold cuts, like salami. 
they raise your blood pressure. That is a lot of sodium too. And make arteries less flexible. They, they, they taste so damn good though. Especially salami. Great on your plate. Less than four ounces once a week. Right. So if you're gonna if you're gonna have good Italian salami, like let's say Hormel Genoa or or something of that, or pepperoni, eat it in moderation. Grass fed beef has higher levels of good for you omega three fatty acids. Well look at the price of grass-fed uh, free-range organic beef. Who can afford it? Enjoy it by adding a little to stir-fries. Skewering it with veggies or adding to chili and casserole. Choose other animal proteins wisely. There are animal proteins that deliver healthy nutrients. Fish like salmon, ocean trout, provide heart smart, brain friendly, DHA omega 3 fatty acids. Skinless chicken. And pikey. Ah, 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 the skin has so much damn flavor. Just gotta make it crispy. Breast. Yeah, you gotta have. Deliver it. plenty of protein with little saturated fat. See, they're blaming the saturated fat. This is probably coming from Orthodox American Dietetics. Wait till so I end it. Uh, I will tell okay, you because okay. I, you want. <laughs> if I would have told you at the beginning, you would have went into a. Tyree? Yes. Alright, continue. Let's finish it first. A forget mode. <laughs> oh, like, uh, like Ronald Reagan used to? Uh, where were we? Turkey breast. They deliver plenty of protein with little saturated fat. Stick with smart portions about the size of the deck of cards. Smart portion? I would be starving if I had it. Go meatless more often. Beans! Soy products like tofu and tempeh. Yeah, only fermented soy. Well flavored with healthy spices and herbs. And nuts are satisfying alternatives to meat. Oh, nuts are great. Even peanuts. Three ounces of animal protein provides 15 to 27 grams of protein. Equivalent plant sources, one cup. Cook lentils. I love lentils, especially... Equals 18 grams. I, I love the red lentils with the skin on. The red ones from India. One and a half cup of tofu. Or from Turkey. Yeah. Equals 20 grams of protein. I use uh, fermented soy bean paste. One cup of cooked black bean equals 15 grams of protein. There you go, which is a miso actually. So. One cup cooked bulgar. Bulgar is uh, cracked wheat. Is steamed and, and cracked. Uh, equals whole wheat. five grams. And ground at the different levels, yes. One cup of quinoa! Eleven grams. Quinoa, my favorite. Both yellow and even better, red quinoa. The ancient grain of the Incas from Peru. Two tablespoons of peanut butter. Eight what? grams. Another favorite of mine. It's actually a legume. It's not a nut. They just call it a peanut. Also from the Incas of Peru. One cup cooked spinach or broccoli. Five grams. Broccoli is surprisingly high, actually, as a veggie. No, broccoli is decent. 
of cauliflower. I love the whole cruciferous family. Have some protein at every meal. Don't wait for dinner. Spreading, spreading your protein out over the day helps muscles make the most of it. Especially as you age. Add nuts to your salad or cereal. You should be working out, uh, elderly people, seniors. Use egg whites for that morning omelet. Spread peanut, almond, walnut butter on sandwiches. Oh, I'm dying. Open my mouth, but I won't. I'll wait till you finish. Dig into a bowl of fresh fruit and non-fat, no sugar added Greek yogurt for dessert. Say, Dr. Mehmet Oz and Dr. Royzen. He's a shill for Big Pharma, <laughs> Dr. Oz. And let me first state that the egg yolk is one of the most nutritious foods on the planet. Uh -huh. All right, he demonizes the egg yolk. Uh -huh. um, he um, he demonizes saturated fats when the culprit is really sugar. <coughs> you want to lose weight permanently and 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 and, and build muscle and, and retain a. Uh, 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 body mass you gotta go and with good the elastin and collagen in your in your skin go Atkins no sugar the Atkins diet is very very similar to the hypoglycemic diet or it is the hypoglycemic diet. or diabetic diet aren't they all the same keto yes ketogenic diet the ketogenic diet encompasses Atkins, hypoglycemia, and diabetes. And, and epilepsy. Have to stay on, on a ketogenic they diet? Should. yes. See, it's, it's, to me it's the most healthy diet to be on. Because the enemy of most diseases, aside from stress, you know, uh, and toxins, whatever, uh, is, um, is sugar. Okay, refined carbohydrates and sugar, which is white flour and white sugar. Uh, anything that ends in the words OSE, anything that's an OS is a sugar, uh, is the enemy. Once you cut that out, you will lose the weight, you will be lean and toned. Of course, you should be doing some form of activity. Some Resistance. Resistance exercise and, uh, and, and, and reasonable aerobics, like you know, walking. If you're an average person, speed walking is very good um, because if you jog and run, it, it might be tough on your joints and you might get shin splints and everything. But speed walking is good, uh, at least 20 minutes non stop to a half hour, at least. And uh, some resistance exercising of your choice. Uh, you don't have to kill yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, stick to that high protein, low carb, uh, sugar free diet, and you'll be fine. But Dr. Oz is is big pharma. He's big pharma. Um, he uh, he did a special one time on the show about uh, nutrition and anti-aging, and uh, one of his biggest suggestions was Botox injections. Now is this Fake is phony fraud? This is the guy that that yo-yo dieter Oprah Winfrey made famous. She took a liking to him. Is that how he got his show? And she's the one that was very rude to Dr. Atkins when he was alive. 
Well, I don't know about Rude, but she said that uh, going on a ketogenic diet made your breath paleotosis. Well, maybe you're detoxifying. That's exactly, well, yeah, or ketones have the smell of their own. Maybe you're, you're going to be doing a lot of crapping on a, on, on a detoxification program. But ketones, the, yeah. the diet is, when you make ketones, it means you're, you're, you're burning your fat on your body. Right. Now, on type 1 diabetes, that's what happens when they go into keto ketosis. They're burning up their body fat, and they get skinnier. Right, and you can buy keto sticks but at when the you pharmacy. But when you are already fat, you know, how harmful is the ketogenic diet? Not. It's about as harmful as jumping off a curb without a parachute. Yeah. You see how they demonize all facts? The orthodoxy? Yeah. They demonize all facts. Everything is thrown together. They even, they even demonize um, this um, medical doctor from the hospital that I go to uh, to get examined. She, she demonized... Um, extra virgin olive oil, co coconut oil, all fats were bad and she was very arrogant to, about it. I was trying to explain to her about the good fats and she wasn't interested in hearing about the good fats. Because she's still stuck in the calories, 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 weight loss, weight loss, calorie weight loss restriction. Thing. Well, she's stuck in the fact that fats Better cause cost heart disease and high cholesterol. Yeah, that too. Not not the fact that it's the it's the high insulin and high sugar in the blood. Yeah, and it's the uh, 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 the uh, the bad the LDL going through the vessels that causes the problem. Well, well, what's when it's low when it's been, what's the word I'm looking for here? The LDL uh, is, well the LDL causes a lesion in the wall because of your artery. Because it's fresh anymore. It's been oxidized. Oxidized is the word I was looking for. The oxidation of LDL cholesterol. That's it. But the LDL cholesterol being high in a person, would you would you say the number one reason is high sugar? Yes, for LDL and triglycerides. High sugar. Yeah. Not the dietary fats. But remember. And cholesterol, like they tell you, don't eat shrimp, don't eat squid, don't eat uh, that's, clams. That's baloney, only one, uh, the, 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 your liver daily produces 75% of the cholesterol in the body, not taking it in from the diet. Not dietary. Yeah. The, the, the body needs dietary cholesterol to produce sex hormones. If you're making your hormones properly, you're using it up. And if you got your, your uh, antioxidants in place, then the LDL won't oxidize. Maybe that's why this old Italian man said to me when he was a kid, he used to he used to drink a fre freshly laid raw egg with the yolk and everything, and then he says it gave him vitality. So wow. did Rocky. <laughs> yeah, but Rocky's eggs came from, da, 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 so came from the soup. Da. Came from the supermarket. <laughs> they didn't come fresh out of the ass of some hen in the hen house, <laughs> warm. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it gave him vitality. Uh, um, well, so beet products too. I mean, beet pro beet, uh, beekeepers. You know, if their bees are safe from from Roundup ready monster.
Monsanto Roundup Ready uh, herbicide. Bee products are extremely vitalizing. Revitalizing. In, in, well, in, 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 that's what I was going to say before. Yeah. One third, I believe the figure is one third of all heart attacks are not caused by high cholesterol. There's homocysteine. There's C-reactive protein. There's many other reasons for heart right. problems. Yeah, well, the homocysteine. But the, the, the allopathic doctors have hooked on to the fat and cholesterol yeah. theory, and that's it. Right. Well, They're be, removable. Uh, B, vitamin B6, B12, and folic acid are very important for neutralizing homocysteine, homocysteine levels. Right, and, and uh, speaking of blood sugar, you people out there with blood sugar disorders should seriously start taking alpha lipoic acid. And chromium. And chromium uh, chelated, you know. Well, it doesn't have to be... Picolinate or nicotinate, whatever. Picolinate, nicotinate, um, uh, 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 glycinate, like the I've one... I've never used that uh, form. Well, that's the uh, the one I order from Albion uh, from through online the the, the ones the, work. the ones where all the minerals come in capsules and they're all they're all amino acids chelated from glycinate you know a selenium glycinate this mm -hmm. they're all glycinates okay. you know well, well it, 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 amino acid chelate you can't get better than that as long as they get in and do their job by right. I'm fine with them. You know, you know me, I always prefer a capsule over a tablet. Capsule, yes. Always go for the, t the capsule. Uh, no binders and excipients and, you know, anything that could, uh, could slow down the uh, absorption. And, and also, some people might be allergic to tablet ingredients. And some people might have low uh, acid in the tum-tum. Yes. The tablets don't get dissolved, and then they get infomercials. Hey, are you taking this, that, and the other thing? And it, well, you know, they're not. they being absorbed. They're not dissolving in your about, tummy. You're talking about your natural hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Wasn't they doing something like that with coral, calcium, or something? Well, it's an old trick. If you want to find out if your, your calcium tablet is breaking down in your system, just drop it in a glass of white vinegar, and uh, for within a half hour, it should be dissolved. <laughs> if it's not dissolved, if you see pieces of it still in there, then you're not going to. Uh, it might just pass out of your system. Yeah. So that's why I, I always go for uh, capsules. You know. Our companies will make everything in capsules. Mm -hmm. So that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for joining us for Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth for this week. And uh, like I always say, the weeks fly by very fast. And uh, uh, the next holiday in front of us is Memorial Day weekend, yeah. which is the end of the month, right? Yeah. Um, Oh, incidentally... I believe it's not on the 30th, though. I think they're, because of the weekend and free day right. weekend, I think they have it on a different day. Okay. I'll have to check the calendar. Uh, the, the unofficial beginning of summer. That's it. Uh, myself, James P. Madonna, and the Renaissance Man Can Create will be performing, representing the uh, Patterson Historic Museum on May 24th, Saturday. And June 14th, which is the uh, Art Walk, the annual Art Walk in historic Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, and um, we will be doing street performance in the museum, but facing Spruce Street. So mm -hmm. we, will be fa we will be outside, but then again, inside, sort of, which is good. You know, and uh, 
and that there will be uh it's a blast it's, uh at dolphin mills they have many bands and uh musicians and plenty of artists all different kinds of art on display Ooh. all different kinds of art there's a guy named uh hugo that specializes in art where he welds metal together he makes things out of uh, scrap metal or, or metallic items and he, you know he paints them but he welds them and he makes all kinds of figures you know modern art he's a recycler yeah yeah that's his specialty and and, it, and it's unbelievable what this man makes mm -hmm. I mean it's really it's a real it's a very different approach to sculpting mm -hmm. instead of sculpting like with what is it with clay or plaster or something like that the man's Marble. using using metal and he's welding it together yep. Yep. So that's it so we'll see it next time next week god willing say so long to these jabronis uh, so long, jabronis. Yeah. Wah, wah. Remember W.C. Fields? Yeah. yeah, he didn't like kid children. Hey, get away from me. You bother me, you little bastards. Yeah, take it. He, he used to imbibe quite often, right? He's always drunk. He's always drunk with that, that, that red, cherry red nose. Yes, yes, he had the nose. Yeah, Tip O'Neill. Oh, Rosacea, yeah, it's like boozacea. <laughs> Think Tip O'Neill had that schnoz. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This has been a Megalife 21 production.